The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the all of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. I want to continue this preaching series today, A Word for the Weary, Part 2. You may be seated in the very presence of our God. My brothers and my sisters, Isaiah writes this prophetic book with passion, and he pens it with profundity. And in fact, it is, it is a word not only for the context of the culture of that day, but it is a word that is profound for our culture and profound for the context of our day. It is a word that is always fresh. It is a relevant word. In fact, it is, it is not only a prophecy and promise, but it is a projection of our future. Somebody listening to me under the sound of my voice, you've been through so much that you don't know which way to turn. Somebody listening to me, the burden that you've been bearing is so heavy that it doesn't seem like a word can help you. It doesn't seem like uh, a church setting can help you and that's the reason there's a danger in normal church work in fact there's a danger in just traditional worship uh, that we do everything that's on the printed program everything from prayer to call to worship to doxology to the songs that are sung to the announcements to the preacher and the speaker and to the invitation and we do all of that all the way through down to the benediction and the problem sometimes with the church is we put all of that in print but we forget to put the holy ghost on the program this is important my brothers and my sisters because this text today is not only targeted to teach us that there's help for the hurting and there's good news for the grieving and we can trust god for the turnaround because turnaround happens at some point. At some point, there has to be turnaround in the life of every believer. And this passage today is a very important passage because, indeed, it is good news for the oppressed. It is good news for those that are in bondage. It is good news for those that really are bound up for whatever, for whatever the reason may be. And in these three verses, the Lord promises deliverance, he promises vengeance, uh, and, and, and he promises ultimately condolence. He promises not only uh, uh, the deliverance of his people, he promises not only the vengeance of his people. In other words, I need you to know that God does not like when you're treated wrong. But God is very specific in that that's not your fight to fight. He says that the battle really does not belong to you, but the battle belongs to him. The Bible is very clear that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. You don't need to revenge, you need him to avenge you. That's what God will do. And so he promises that, but he also promises benevolence. In other words, he promises to help you where help is needed. He promises to meet you at the point of your need. There are three things that I want to anchor in this preaching uh, of these three verses today. I want to anchor, first of all, this sovereign statement that takes place in verse number one. It is a sovereign statement, one that all of us should take note of. Uh, and, and the sovereign statement comes as a result of the severe struggle of the people of God. Uh, but then we're going to close on what I call a supernatural shift. It is here in verse number one that he helps us to understand not only that, that the spirit of God is present, but the spirit of God is powerful. We do know what the word of God says, that it is not by our power, 
It is not by our might, but it's by his spirit, saith the Lord. This text is targeted to teach us that as long as God is with you, as long as you've got the presence of God and the spirit of God, then anything is accomplished. Anything is achievable. Anything can be done. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. As long as we've got the spirit of God with us, we may go through some weeping, but it only endures for the night. But joy comes in the morning. We may go through some trouble, but trouble don't last always. We may have some difficult days, some dramatic days, some dysfunctional days, some disturbing days, some discouraging days, some depressing days. But, but ultimately, God is a God of deliverance. There's no need in preaching a text like this from a standpoint of deliverance if you don't desire deliverance. Every child of God must have a desire for deliverance. I wonder if I'm preaching to anybody listening to me that you've made up in your mind you're not where you want to be. You may not be where you used to be, but you're not where you want to be. And you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God by way of his spirit is able to better you. God by way of his spirit is able to bring you. He's able to deliver you. But we sing songs like, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. This passage, believe it or not, is a Christological appearance in the Old Testament of Christ Jesus. For it is the same passage that we find Jesus quoting in the book of Luke. It is the same passage where Jesus is saying, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. There are several promises in this text, my brothers and my sisters, and it's much to be gleaned from because it is in this particular text that we not only see the prophecy or the prophetic message of God or what is to come, the projection that, what, that you know, shall take place, but, but it, is, it, is also, it is also the prophecy. This is the prophetic word of God that's not only good for those in that day, but it's good for us today because evidently what God does in this particular passage is he takes a diagnosis of the people of God uh, if there's a problem with your automobile you need a diagnostic test before you can be treated and before you can receive prognosis in your body you need diagnosis this is important to understand that because God made us he's the he has the ability to diagnose us in fact he can give the best diagnostic you may think you've got it all going on but God may say no that's not what's happening you may you may think you all of that and God may say no you got some work to do you may think that you're rich God may say no you poor you may think that you got it uh, the way God wants it and God reminds us by way of diagnostics. He reminds us that, listen, you have not made it yet. That's important, my brothers and my sisters. It's important to hear what God has to say about us. It's important not only to get his promises, but it's important to understand what his diagnoses are for our life. Because when we understand the diagnosis, then we can receive the prognosis. Can I preach for a while here? There's a cause in this text, but there's also a cure. And look at what happens. These four things, particularly in verse number one, as he talks about this sovereign statement. Isaiah, the prophet, is speaking to the people of God. And I need to tell you, in that context, he's speaking to people that are oppressed. Now listen, uh, he's talking to people that are oppressed because they are under bondage. Uh, uh, they, they, they have been bound. In fact, there is something binding them. And I need to say this to each and every one of you under the sound of my voice and those that are listening live. You need to understand that there's more than just physical bondage. Uh, these people that were being talked to in this text were physically bound, but there are others that uh, are really in a worse shape than physical bondage because I need to tell you there's something worse than physical bondage. Can I tell you what it is? It's mental bondage because when you have mental bondage, you can be free physically, but you're still locked up. You're still handcuffed to your situation. You're still bound. You're still in bondage. In fact, uh, when you are mentally 
bound, when you are mentally uh, handcuffed, when you are mentally uh, in bondage, it simply means that, listen, you have decided not to transform, but to conform. In, in other words, you can't get past that thing. I mean, you stuck right there. I mean, God has given you new mercy, but you still can't get past it. God has given you another day, but you still can't get past it. God has given you another chance, but you still can't get past it. God has given you another opportunity, but you still still can't get past it. God has blessed you in spite of how they treated you, but you still can't get past it. God has blessed you to make it even without their help, but God still is blessing you, but you still can't get. Will y'all help me? You still can't get past it. And, and that's, that's the danger of living life in the rearview mirror. Do I have a witness here? Here God gives us help for our hurt. The prophet Isaiah says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the meek. Now those that are meek are those that are, 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 are listening with intent and have their temper under control. Can I preach for a while here? If the Bible does not say blessed are the weak, the Bible says blessed are the meek. The beatitude says blessed are the meek, they shall inherit the earth. It is important, my brothers and my sisters, as children of God, to remain meek. In other words, don't think you got it all together. Don't get so arrogant and so proud that you cannot take instruction from the word of God. In other words, you've got to not only be able to take instruction from God's word, but you've got to be able to lead, be led by the spirit of God. He says, listen, I have come now to preach to the meek. Good tidings. In other words, the meek are those that are open to it. Yeah, the meek are those that are ready for the change. The meek are those that are willing to hear what God has to say. I wonder if I'm preaching to anybody under the sound of my voice that's willing to hear what God has to say. Am I preaching to anybody that really have made up in your mind that like Solomon says, I'm going to trust in the Lord with all of my heart. And I'm going to lean not to my own understanding. But in all of my ways, I'm going to acknowledge him because I know he will direct my path. He will make my path straight. I made up in my mind. I don't know the way, but he knows the way. Am I preaching to anybody here? You've got to understand. You've got to be meek for that. You've got to be open to hear what God has to say. I mean, you've got to make up in your mind, God, your will is best for me. You know what's next for me. I don't even want to move without you. I don't want to turn without you. I don't want to do anything without you. I want you to lead me. I want you to guide me. I want you to take me where I need to be taken to. I need you to hold me. I need you to trust. I need to trust you. I can't trace you all the time, but I need to trust you all the time. So, so Isaiah goes on here with this sovereign statement. He said, listen, I've come to bring good tidings and I need to help somebody that's grieving today. I need to help somebody that's in a, a situation that it doesn't seem like you're going to get out of. Somebody that's listening to me. I need to remind you what Jesus said and that is there is nothing in life that is common to man that he has not provided a way of escape. Am I preaching to anybody here? In other words, you've got to understand, whatever it is, you can get out of it. Well, I feel like preaching in this room. I mean, somebody, you need to get that in your mind. You don't need to just be stuck where you are. You've got to make up in your mind, whatever it is, I can get out of this. I told you, I fell in love with that song 30 years ago, In Case You've Fallen, By the Wayside of Life, Dreams and Visions Shattered. You're broken inside. You don't have to stay the shape that you're in. The potter wants to put you back together again he said listen there are some promises here in this sovereign statement i've come to bring good news and somebody listening to me you need to understand that god comes with good news tell your neighbor there's some good news tell a pastor's getting ready to tell us about the good news there there's some good news in the word of god he says i come i come with good news and i need you to understand whatever the diagnosis is it's good news well i feel like preaching this morning even though it may hurt sometimes, it's still good news. Even though, even though every now and then you can't say amen, you have to say ouch. It's still profitable. It's still good news. Because whatever you're going through in life, you've got to know God is intentional. It's working together for your good. 
Can I get somebody that I'm preaching to that can make up in your mind? You know that, that whatever I'm going through, it's working together for my good. It may not feel good, but it's working together for my good. I don't have to worry. God is intentional. I don't have to worry because it's working for me. It's working for me. It's working for me. I don't have to worry because it's working for me it's working for me y'all ought to get with me it's working for me come on now you said come on i don't have to worry because it's working for me it's working for me it's working for me i don't have to worry because it's working for me it's working for me is working for me. I don't know where that came from. Y'all be sitting. Wow. It just dropped in my spirit. Y'all ain't even shouting. Somebody tell a neighbor, listen, that, that dropped in my spirit too. I don't have to worry. Because it's working for me. Can I preach for a minute here? Look at what he says. I bring you good news. And I don't care how bad the situation is. God's word is good news. He sings, I bring, I bring you good news. I bring you good news, good tidings to the meek. Then he says, now he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, those that have been through some heartbreak. Am I talking to anybody? Holler back at me if you've been through some heartbreak. Life will break your heart. People will break your heart. Can I preach for a minute here? And every now and then, I'm going to tell you, now listen, the biggest, the biggest enemy that we have is not sin and Satan. The biggest enemy that we have is self. And I'm going to help you to see that in just a moment. Because sometimes it's not the enemy that breaks your heart. Sometimes it's you that breaks your heart. Because sometimes the biggest enemy is the inner me. Boy, I feel like preaching in this room. When you can get the man in the mirror right, yeah, yeah, then, then your situation can become right. So he said, listen, I come to bind up the brokenhearted. In other words, I know that you've been oppressed. I know you've been through some things, but I come to bind that up. You know, we do have the authority to bind and to loose. And that's good news to know that we've got the authority to bind and to loose. You know, that's the good news. Let me tell you, I'm the pastor, but you can't always get to me. But you got enough authority in your own hand to bind and to loose because the Lord has given us the keys to the kingdom. And whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Boy, I just feel like it this morning. And, and, and whatever, whatever is bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. He says, listen, I come now to bind up the broken heart. In other words, I'll tell your neighbor, change is coming. He, he says, I come to heal the hurt. I come to, to turn around those that are really struggling and in trouble and in trials and in tribulation. I come to comfort those that are mourning. I come to give some relief to those that are grief. He talks about two specific times in this text. And I tell you, this is a Christological appearance of the Christ in the Old Testament. In fact, in every book of the Old Testament, you can find some uh, uh, appearance of the Christ. In other words, it's always pointing to Christ. Even though this text is written six 600 years before Jesus is born in Bethlehem, he is still pointing toward the Christ. And what he's saying is that, listen, not only do we have something to celebrate, which is the year of Jubilee. Now, in that day, in the year of Jubilee, it was a time of atonement, recovery, and restoration. He said, now, when the time of Jubilee came, this is what would happen during the time of Jubilee. All the debt would be resolved. That would be a time of release. I wish I had somebody in this room can shout for, for debt being dissolved. I mean, y'all don't know when to shout. I need somebody listening to me that know because I got some good news for you. You may not shout there, but I got some good news for you. That was a specific time for the year of Jubilee in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, we live in perpetual Jubilee. In fact, we live in a season of Jubilee. I mean, if you save, you got Jubilee. I wish I had somebody that's saved in the room that can thank God for Jubilee. Well, if you can thank him for Jubilee, what it means is that you understand it's a time of celebration. Yeah. 
No matter what you're going through, that's what Jubilee means. It's a time of celebration. It, it means that God has given us a time of recovery, release, and restoration. Is there anybody in the room that really can shout because you know you've got uh, restoration, you've got recovery, and you've got some release. Now listen, you may not shout, but I'm going to help you shout. I can look at you and tell you ain't been through what you, you, you don't look like what you've been through. I can look at you and I can tell that God has been good to you. Now don't let me see it and you don't see it. I can look at you and see that God has made a way for you and there ought to be some celebration in your life because you don't have to wait for the day of jubilee you got jubilee tell your neighbor i got jubilee come on tell another neighbor i got jubilee i got something to shout about because i've got jubilee i've been saved i've got jubilee i've been set free i've got jubilee i've been rescued I've got jubilee. I've been restored. I've got jubilee. I've been redeemed. I've got jubilee. He says by this sovereign statement that listen, not only is he here to bind up the broken heart, but to proclaim liberty. Proclaim liberty to the captives. In other words, those that have been held hostage. Somebody listening to me, you've been held hostage to a, a habit. Somebody else, you've been held hostage to a relationship. Somebody else, you've been held hostage to some, own, some of your own struggles. Are you listening to me this morning? But he says, here's what I've come to do. I've come to bring liberty to those that are captive. Now, I need to tell you, I said this text is about deliverance. This text is about vengeance. And this text is also about condolence. But it is also about benevolence. Let me tell you a little bit about it. First of all, it is about, it is about deliverance. Because every child of God needs deliverance. Now baby, don't think you don't. You may have been delivered from something, but you need to be delivered from something else. Every day of our life, we desire God to deliver us. Because God is about making us better and not bitter. Can I preach for a few minutes? And so here's what he says. He says, deliverance, I've got deliverance for you. And, 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 and I also will take vengeance for you over your enemies. Are you listening to me? And I'll also give you some benevolence. I'll help you with some stuff. Can, can I preach for a minute here? But he said, now listen, you got to understand that the deliverance comes first. And then once the deliverance comes, then comes the liberation. See, a whole lot of folk are not liberated because they've not been delivered. Here's what I've discovered. The reason that some folk can sit down idle while the fire is burning. Why some folk can sit down idle while faith and fire is intersecting. While some folk can sit down idly like they're doing the mannequin challenge when the spirit of God is moving. Here's what I've discovered because I've been watching people. I've been studying them all my life. And here's what I've discovered that sometimes the reason people cannot get it is they ain't been through enough. But whenever you've been through some, can't nobody stop you from praising God. Can't nobody stop you from celebrating. Can't nobody stop you from giving God glory. When you knew you were this close to hell, but God delivered you. When you knew you were about to slip, but God held you, you can't help but give him glory. And I hope you're not too cool. I hope you're not too dignified. I hope you're not too sophisticated. I do know when to be cool. I do know when to be calm. And I do know when to be collected. I do have some swag. I know when to chill out. I do know when to keep my mouth shut. I do know to do that. In fact, the Bible says I need to study to listen sometimes. I do need to do that. But then I also know what venue I'm in. Are you listening to me? And I know worship ain't the time for me to be cool. Because worship is when I get with God. Do I have a witness here? And my cool, calm, and collected self can't keep myself when I'm in a place of worship because I know God has been so good for me to not say something. Lee Williams said, if I couldn't say a word, I just waved my hand. That was a young boy one time in the back of the church. The church was really 
Spirit of God was really moving. Church was hyped. Folk was shouting and praising and worshiping. And that little boy in the back stood up and lit a cigarette lighter. And the pastor said, hey, get him. What's wrong with him? Lighting the fire in church. The boy mama stood up and said, pastor, don't worry about him. See, he's deaf and mute. And he cannot talk. And all he's trying to say is, I feel the fire burning. And whenever you feel the fire burning, you ought to show some. He gives us a sovereign statement here. He says, I come, I come to bow. I come to bind up the brokenhearted. And then I come to bring liberty to the captives. And the opening of prison to them that are bound. Now, you may not get this, but you'll get it on the way home. God wants to let you out. Let me rewind. God wants to let you out. You've been stuck too long. You've been held captive too long. You've been, you've been, in, you've been in prison too long. God wants to let you out. And I told you there's something worse than physical bondage, mental bondage, and even spiritual bondage. Because what miracle bondage, will, what, what, what mental bondage will do is you can be out but still think you're in. Ah, oh, let me see if I got time to deal with this. See, we walk by faith and not by sight. How many of you know that? Now what happens is that it, 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 the battle is won in the brain first. Before it's won on the battlefield. Somebody got me. Somebody got me right there. Somebody holler back at me if you got me. Did you get it? I, I said it's won in the brain first. Before it's won on the battlefield. Now see, let me see if I can help you for just a moment. Those of you that have not been in Bible study, let me bring you up to date. It always happens in the spirit realm first. Before it manifests in the physical realm. See, some of you already healed and you don't even know how to shout. Just because it don't feel like it don't mean that God has not already approved your healing. You got to make up in your mind. Can I get your Bible on it? I almost preached it today. That was my second sermon. I'll save it for another day. But, but, but Solomon says, as a man thinketh. In his heart, so is he. Now that has always been baffling and confusing to people that have a carnal mind. Because a carnal mind, Brittany, will never understand spiritual things. So here's why it becomes confusing, Kim. The reason it becomes confusing is that what happens now when we walk by faith and not by sight, and we are transformers and not conformers, what happens is that we don't look like what we've been through. And because we don't look like what we've been through, people don't understand how we can shout when we're suffering. How we can praise in our pain. How we can give God glory in our grief. How we can worship in our worrying. Somebody listening to me, you understand what I'm talking about. And the reason is that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what happens is that that gives the believer confidence. Let the church say confidence. I wonder if I'm preaching to anybody today that's got confidence. That gives the believer confidence. In other words, we don't know how he's going to do it, but we know he's going to do it. We don't know when he's going. Boy, y'all help me, but we know when he's going to do it. We know he will do it. We don't know what he's going to do, but he will do it. We don't know how he's going to do it, but he will do it. But it ain't my business to know how. Can I get some real folk in here that, that you're not trying to logically deduce? You ain't trying to figure out what God up to. I mean, I need some real believers. Y'all wave at me. I need some folk that you ain't trying to figure it out. In fact, you don't even care how he do it. But anyway, he blessed me. I'll be satisfied. God, I don't care what you got to do to get this bill paid. Just help me. I don't care what you got to do to heal this body. Just help me. 
I don't care what you got to do to make a way for me. Just help me. When you can, when he can unlock your mind, he can unlock your mentality. Can I just teach for a minute? We are transformers, not conformers. Romans 12 and 1 said, I beseech you by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be ye not transformed. Be ye not conformed to the ways of this world, but be ye transformed. Now we're getting ready to shout together. I mean, you better unloosen your shouting shoes because we're getting ready to shout together. What that means is that we don't conform in nothing. Just because everybody else in the hospital is sick. Let the sick say I'm healed. Just because everybody around me is broke. Let the broke say I'm rich. Can I preach for a while here? Because as a man thinketh in his heart. Can I just tell you something else? Now listen. He can change your situation if he can change your mind. Am I making sense in this message? If he can change your mind, he can change your circumstance. See, ain't no need in him delivering you out of that physically if you're going to stay there mentally. Some of y'all been out of a relationship for years but can't get over it. Because your body left but your mind stayed. Y'all not helping me preach in this room. He says, I want to unlock your mind. How do I unlock your mind? I unlock your mind because you got to understand that, listen, you got to let this mind be in you. I'm trying to finish this sermon without shouting. You got to let this mind be in you. Which was also, that's what he's saying, Pat. You got to let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. In other words, you got to understand that God wants to unlock your mind so that he can deliver you from your situation. Now here's what I'm trying to say. You got to experience the deliverance of God before you can get the liberty in God. Here's what that means. That means now whenever God has freed your mind of stuff, whenever he's helped you to transform, now note this, conformers will be changed, but transformers are changers. Can I tell you, we are not thermometers, <laughs> we are thermostats. You're still not getting it. We are not controlled by the temperature. Control the temperature. When you walk into a room, the room don't change you. Baby, you change the room. Boy, I feel like it today. I don't know if you feel like listening. We are transformers. And that's why we have to experience deliverance so that we can get past some stuff. You need to pray, God, give me a supernatural forgettery. Help me to forget some things. Because every time I think about it, I start tripping. Every time I think about it, I start missing it. And so, Lord, I need some supernatural forgettery. I need you to help me. Get past it. Recite after me, Lord, help me get past it. 
Say it again, Lord, help me get past it. Say it like you mean it, Lord, help me get past it. We change the room. Now let me help you. That means everything we walk into, we change. Whatever God allows your path to do, everything you walk into, you change it. If you end up walking into the hospital, every nurse that tend to you ought to get saved. Everybody around you ought to know the Lord. You ought to be a witness. Y'all not helping me preach. Because we are change agents. Tell your neighbor we're game changers. Tell them the game don't change us. We change the game. Boy, I wish I had somebody I can preach to. Look at another neighbor and say, we change the game. I mean, tell them, take a good look at me. I'm getting ready to change the game. I mean, I'm getting ready to walk into my victory. I'm getting ready to transform my situation. God is getting ready to do something different in my life. I'm getting ready to change. I'm sick of this stuff. I'm getting ready to change it. I'm a change agent. Well, I can't hold you too long. So let me cut across the field. The sovereign statement there is in, is in that verse because, verse number one, because of the severe struggle of the people. Now, I'm preaching to some people, and I know, and I'm always conscious of the fact. I'm always cognizant of the fact. That although people may look good, does not mean that they feel good. Somebody listening to me, you have to fake it to make it. Somebody else listening to me, you have to faith it to make it. I wish I had a preaching crowd here. In fact, somebody listening to me, you didn't feel like coming to church, but you press your way. But now that you got here, you feel better. Do I have a witness in the room? You didn't want to get up. You didn't want to get out of the bed. But you pressed your way. That's what faith will make you do. Faith will make you press your way. Even when you can't see your way, faith will make you press your way. Somebody that I'm talking to, you've got a severe struggle. I don't know what it is. There, there are some things we can't even talk about. Can I minister before I holler? There are some things that we can't even share with other people. In fact, some of the stuff you're sharing, you ought not be sharing. There are some things that all should be only between you and God. I mean, there are some things. I mean, I'm not perfect just like you're not perfect. But you ain't going to know all my business. Because you can't help me. I got to take it to the one that can help me. Y'all help me preach in here. Look at what he says. He says, we got severe struggles. We got severe struggles. We got some severe struggles. People are in bondage. They're in bondage in their mind. They are in bondage spiritually. Somebody listening to me, you can't get up because your mind is down. You can't rise above your mind. Are you listening to me? It may not be you, it may be your neighbor. Don't look at them, but somebody's got stinking thinking. Your mind in the gutter. God is trying to expand your territory. But your mind is bad. God is trying to increase your territory. God is trying to give you more. But you got your mind in the wrong place. Do I have a witness here? And God is saying, your body is here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. I need to change your mind. You got severe struggles. Severe struggles in your family. Severe struggles in your finances. Severe struggles in your situation. Severe struggles in your life. Severe struggles. And God is saying, I got something for your severe struggles. And I need you to be transparent with me. And if you know you haven't made it, and you know you got some mountains still to get over, 
and you know you got some valleys still to get through and you've got you've got a severe struggle in your life you need to look up toward heaven and say change my mind come on you need to say God change my mind help, help my mind to elevate because if my mind elevates then my situation will elevate Well, this is where I shouted, and, uh, and I'm not going to keep you long, but I do welcome you to shout with me. This is one of those words you got to let simmer. Sovereign statement in verse number one, going into verse number two, there's the severe struggles. But then all of a sudden, he shows up with supernatural shifting. And I need somebody to say Supernatural. Somebody say shift. shift. This side say supernatural. supernatural. This side say shift. shift. Supernatural. supernatural. Shift. shift. Supernatural. Shift. shift. God shows up here with a supernatural shift. And there are some folk that think that uh, they know everything about God's word. But you really don't if you don't know about supernatural. Because what the supernatural does is what we can't do. Look at what he says. He said, now I come to not only appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. In other words, those that have been crying. Now this has nothing to do with just grief from the loss of a loved one or the loss of a friend. But this has something to do with the grief of the loss of some in your life. Some of you have lost some, some joy. Some of you have lost some peace. Some of you have lost your zeal. Do I have a preaching crowd here? And he says, listen, I, I come unto them that mourn in Zion. This is Zion. Make some noise, Zion. Make some noise. Yeah, make some noise, Zion. To give unto them beauty for your ashes. In other words, what you thought was burned up, what you thought was good for nothing, God said, I came to give you beauty for your ashes. I know you've been through so much. I know you've had such a tough time. But God said, I'm getting ready to make what was ugly pretty. I'm getting ready to give you some beauty for your ashes. Now somebody that I'm preaching to, that's your testimony. Because you've been through enough ugly situations. But you know that God was able to turn that thing around. Was able to bring beauty out of your ashes. Now, this is what really made me shout. And I told the early morning crowd, it's just like a butterfly that was not born a butterfly, but was born a caterpillar and stayed in the dirt before the Lord was ready for them to be presented as a butterfly. The dirt, my brothers and my sisters, was the workshop. But then at some point, God brought them to the showroom. And I need somebody listening to me now that know that you may be in the workshop of life. You may be dealing with some things in the dirt. But I want you to understand that in due time, you'll work your way out of the cocoon. And when you work your way out of the cocoon, you'll come out pretty like a butterfly. Do I have a witness head? Which means when you change your mind, you change your mentality. But then when you change your mentality, there ought to be some evidence on the outside. In fact, I tell people all the time, we walk by faith and not by sight. Which means just because you're going through, don't mean you have to look like you're going through. Can I preach to somebody in the room? But you got to learn to lift your head up. You got to learn to take your head out the dirt. You got to learn to put your shoulders back. And you got to believe what God said you are. And the Lord said that you are the head and you're not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You're the lender and not the borrower. Do I have a witness head? Which means you got to change your appearance. God don't want you looking like you defeated but you ought to look like you're delivered can i get somebody under the sound of my voice to stand to your feet and thank god you've been delivered 
have I got a witness here why don't you look at the neighbor next to you and tell them neighbor I've been delivered tell them you don't know what I've been through but I've been delivered they look take a good look at me tell them I am a living testimony tell them I've been delivered tell them I might not be what I ought to be but I'm not what I used to be I've been delivered you ought to wave your hand if you know God brought you out and you've been delivered you got to change your appearance but you got to change your attitude that's what the next part says it says not only did God deliver me and give me liberty not only did he give me beauty for my ashes but then the Bible says that he dropped some oil on me he gave me the oil of joy and I wish I had about 300 folk that can stand to your feet because you know that you've been through some things but you got the oil of joy you know that you've had some struggles but you got the oil of joy is there anybody listening that don't weep and endure us for the night but joy comes in the morning is there anybody listening that no God would give you the all of joy look at a neighbor for the last time and tell a neighbor after all I've been through I still have joy tell them this joy that I have the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away is it anybody here that's got joy weeping may endure from the night but you've got some joy in your circumstance you've got some joy now let me teach you before I preach you because joy is not happiness that's two different things see you can have happiness but happiness only lasts as long as things are happening do I have a witness here that's why some people go to happy hour what it really means is that for that hour you can get some happiness but joy is not based on what's happening let me tell you this way somebody said happiness is based on external collection but joy is based on internal connection I feel like preaching now do I have a witness here that no it does not matter what's going on around me I can shout because of what's in me because what's in me is greater than what's around me can I get some believers that's got the all of joy to wave your hand do I have some believers that's got the all of joy to shout in your situation when you got the all of joy it does not matter what you're going through you still have a praise it does not matter what you're going through you still got joy it does not matter what you're going through you still give him glory can I get some believers that's got the all of joy to lift up your hand open up your mouth let me hear the voice of Zion if you know that you got all on you the devil tried to get you but you got all on you they tried to destroy you but you got all on you they tried to trip you up but you got back up again because you got all on you and if you got all on you you ought to open up your mouth you ought to give God praise have I got a witness here you ought to look at your neighbor and tell a neighbor I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth oh magnify the Lord with me let us exalt his name together can I preach to some people that still have joy you've been through the storm you've been through the rain you've had some discouragement but you still got joy if you still got joy work your way close to me if you got the all of joy if God made a way for you when there was no way you still got joy